Well, <laughs> this is really quite easy. This is just going to give us. Ooh. Hey, massive legend here. Good morning, Flemis. Here's a little problem I found on actually good math problems, if I remember correctly, or implying we can discuss mathematics. Anyways, I really don't care. At first, let's consider what we have. We have a monic polynomial of the fifth degree, meaning our leading coefficient right here on our highest degree term is just one. So by definition, this is called monic polynomial. And also we have some initial values for this polynomial up here, namely f of one is one, f of two is three, blah, blah, blah. And our main goal for today is to find out f of six. How would you go on with something like this? Well, there's a strategy you might have seen before. It's often used in algebra, actually. What you wanna do, we wanna construct ourselves a new polynomial where those initial values right here are going to be our roots. Meaning, we want to find out, for example, some g of x being equal to, well, f of x plus some unknown h of x, such that those are our roots. So such that um, g of 1 is equal to g of 2 is equal to blah, blah, blah. It's going to be equal to f of 5, um, g of 5, I'm sorry, being equal to 0 such that we can factor this thing right here to find out our f of x in the end. So this is a strategy you might have seen before. It's often used in algebra and abstract algebra. Okay, how would you go on with something like this? So how can we actually find out our h of x, for example? Maybe you can see a certain pattern in here. I'm going to draw a little bit and maybe you can see it from there. f of one, is equal to 1. Let's interpret our polynomial as just little dots. So f of 1 is equal to 1. Okay, first dot. f of 2 is equal to 3. Why not interpret this x value we have plugged in as the number of rows? So one row gives us one dot, two rows gives us three dots. So 1 plus 2 is 3. What about the next one? So we have three rows, so 1 this is the second row, and then we have our third row. Okay, maybe you have heard about those before. Those are called tri triangular numbers, if I remember correctly, but there's another term used for this. This thing right here just follows from the finite summation of natural numbers, one after another, called the little Gauss, Gauss theorem. So we can rewrite this right here, the number of dots as nothing but n times n plus one, over two. You can prove by induction that this right here holds. So if we plug in the number five right here, this would be that right here, we get five squared plus five, which is 30 over two, which is going to result in 15. And this is just this right here. And yeah, this is just how this pattern works on the first five terms. And this is actually really good because this allows us to construct our g of x right here, where this right here is our h of x, respectively. So if we replace this with an x, this is going to be our h of x. Okay, now we can plug this into here and see what we actually get. So our g of x is now f of x, which is still unknown, and then positive. Let's put a positive right here at the moment. Um, this right here, x times x plus one, over 2. Okay, this is just how you can do this. Now, you might ask yourself, do we need a positive or negative sign? It really depends on your function that you have right here, but I would, in, but I would invite you to place a little negative sign right here, just because we want those right here to be our root. So all those initial values we have plugged into here in our f, are going to be our roots. So if we take g of 1, for example, we get f of 1, which is 1, and then minus the first triangular number, 1. So it really depends on your h of x. 
But I want you guys to notice something. Our f of x is nothing but a fifth degree monic polynomial. And this right here is nothing but a second degree polynomial. And if we subtract a fifth degree from a two degree polynomial, we are just going to get a fifth degree polynomial once again. So our g of x is actually just another monic fifth degree polynomial. But here's the really, really cool fact about that. We have a fifth degree polynomial. And this 50 degree polynomial has exactly five real or complex roots. Here in this case, they are real roots. But we have found all of those out because all of our five initial values are just those right here. So you see, we have found out all the roots that our g of x actually has. Meaning this allows us to actually factor our g of x. Just simple algebra. Meaning we have x minus the first root, times x minus the second root, dot, 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 until x minus the last root. And this is actually really cool, because now we can just add this term on both sides, so that we can f of, uh, that, so that we can get f of x being nothing but, well, x squared plus x over two, plus x minus one, dot, 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 x minus five. It's as easy as it is, okay? And well, now we can just plug our six into here because we have found the final definition for our f of x. If we plug six into here, this is going to give us one times two times three times four times five, which is nothing but five factorial on this part right here. I'm going to put it here at first because, well, our addition commutes on the natural and real numbers, etc. And if we plug six into here, this is nothing but plus 36 plus six, over two, well, <laughs> this is really quite easy. This is just going to give us 21 in the end. So this is 18 plus three, which is 21. Five factorial is 24 times five, 120. So this is going to give us 120 plus 21, which is nothing but 141. And then we are done. So we have found out our f of six. So if we plug in x being equal to six, so this is not an equal sign, this is a piece of shit right here. I'm terribly sorry. I'm still not feeling too good. But if you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, you know how you can do this. And well, I guess up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya. Sind Sie der Slenderman? Sei Sie der, 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 der Flammable? Ich seh nicht. Das können Sie mal in Ihr Video nehmen. Oh, Sie seid doch der Flammable. Ha, oh ja. Are you the Flammable Mavs? Alter, Flammable. The Mavs.